Okay, good afternoon, good morning from wherever you are, and maybe good night for those who are in the evening session. As we start this webinar, we would just like to welcome everyone to this very interesting session of webinars. We hope you've been attending and watching the rest of them and learning a lot through the process. So today we are very honored to have one of the last webinars in this series where we'll be discussing some very insightful and empowering information and use cases that you can apply in your different countries as well as learn from what others have succeeded. So to start today, we will have four speakers who will be presenting use cases from their different countries. Before we start, perhaps just to understand that social innovation in entrepreneurship is very important. Because it is mission driven, it goes beyond just starting a business. It creates innovative solutions. It has high impact and you measure impact beyond financial impact. And also it has diverse models of entrepreneurship. Today's presenters will show you how well they have used this concept in building their businesses. So as we start, for those who are joining the webinar, I'd like to request participants to go to the chat and introduce themselves, type in your name, what country you're from, and say hello to the rest of us. And also note, we have the Q&A icon there that looks like a balloon chat, where you can post your questions, which will be shared with each of the speakers and we'll sample some of them to ask as well during the presentation of the webinars. So I hope you can start introducing yourself from the chat. I see we are about 26 participants. Ah, welcome. Welcome to those who have introduced themselves. We are very happy to see you here and we hope to have a very interactive and insightful discussion. So that said, let us start with our presentations. We are honored to have four speakers and we will start by having our first speaker who comes from India. Our next speaker will be from Iran, our third speaker from Italy, and our fourth speaker will be from Uzbekistan. So you notice we are creating a footprint across the countries. Our first speaker is Dr. Sweta Singh. She has a team and she'll be presenting a fascinating talk on international participation partnership model for educational entrepreneurship, integrating social, digital, and green strategies for emerging skills in agriculture. Dr. Singh, if you're ready, I will allow you to start your presentation and kindly note your questions, type them, and we'll be ready to answer them after we finish our presentations. Thank you very much, Dr. Singh. Thank you, Jacqueline, and I hope you can see my right screen. As a full Sorry to interrupt. Um, could you switch to full screen mode? We still see yep. the previous screen. Is it better now? Yes. Okay, awesome. That's great. Thank you very much. So good day, everyone. Um, as Jacqueline has just introduced, this is a project which was uh, done on uh, international partnership model for education, entrepreneurship, integrating social and digital green strategies for emerging skills in agriculture. This project actually represents a pioneering effort to reshape vocational education through global collaboration. By merging social engagement, digital innovation, and sustainable practices, we aimed to equip the next generation with the skills needed to excel in the evolving agriculture sector. So let's dive into the, um, the, the structure which we followed and uh, brighten yourself to transform the vet, vet education uh, system across the globe. So funded by Australian Government Department of Education, the University of Adelaide led this project called the Developing Critical Agriculture Skills Courses in India. In short, DASKI, and that's how I would refer throughout the presentation today, was brought together a team of highly skilled agricultural experts and research professionals from both Australia and India. So our prime objective of the project was to identify a demand-driven set of future skills in Indian agriculture sector. It, 
it's um, enhanced the connection between Australia and Indian actors within the agricultural vocational education um, system, which we call VET system. And as you know, with the TVET system. So by developing a cohort of training providers who created and co-delivered the quality training, demonstrated a partnership-based process for engaging the Australian and Indian VET sectors to work together, which could be applied to other sectors and additionally, it curated the global best practice for vocational education and training. So the methodology undertaken was a comprehensive assessment to determine the priority skills that were needed in the Indian agriculture sector. And for each uh, priority skill, our team co-developed the standards and training content and conducted the pilot training courses in India. Each skill area, as you can see on your screen, became a separate package, followed the same sort of approach and engaged the uh, training partners, both from India and Australia. Some of the salient features of our methodology, and that's how we uh, class as a unique features, was that this whole project was taken on a phased approach. We had massive local network arrangement, rigorous communication with local net networks alongside with our training partners, and we selected the best and the most relevant stakeholders for with who had potential and uh, uh, scalability uh, outlines. We had multiple iterations and validations across the partner organization in all phases of the project. The first step was the scoping study, which provided the foundation for the DASCI project by providing a detailed analysis of the current challenges and opportunities associated with the Indian agriculture sector. The scoping study was set out to identify skill sets that were capable of contributing to the future prosperity and competitive nature of the Indian agriculture sector based on the ability to further enhance the productivity, profitability, sustainability, and providence of transforming agriculture systems in India through skilling. An action research approach was adopted and the scoping study identified five skill courses and elements that needed to be factored into the design and contextualization of the pilot training courses by ad adopting a sustainable farming systems approach. So the next phase was to develop the standards which, which was identified from those emerging skill area. Comprehensive research and mapping was undertaken to study the standards from both countries and contextualize to suit the identified skills to develop the course. The Indian and Australian VET system have different structures and terminology, which needed to be understood and mapped to be enabled to co-develop the standards, so to suit the purpose. The project team was established in two phases, the core DASCI project team members who were part of the initial consortium, and then a group of training organizations from India and Australia was curated. The core team undertook the responsibility to identify the contract suitable partners who would prepare and deliver the pilot training courses. For each priority skill, potential training partners in both countries were identified by setting specific criteria so that the DASCI objectives were met. Once the partner were identified for each course, both India and Australian partners followed a structured approach to co-create the content, focusing on the three phases of design, develop and deliver. They began with mapping content with the standards, ensuring the development of content is aligned with the qualification framework principles from both countries. Our delivery plan included comprehensive kits, which were slides, handout, activities, expert speakers. We bought live Australian farms uh, while we were delivering our programs in India. Real case studies contextualized to the real local needs. Each module had a right balance of theory and practice, which is the crux of vocational education, tailored to the right level of the qualification uh, levels. 
some of the unique features uh, of delivery of pilot course were that it aimed to identify partners from diverse sector, including government official, extension, uh, extension personnel, farmers, community organization, industry partner. It emphasizes on the com comprehensive and collaborative lesson planning to integrate the innovative uh, learning design. We additionally, it involved mapping the courses um, and encouraged uh, virtual interactions from international exposure, as I just mentioned before, with contributions from vocational ed educational practi uh, practitioners ecosystem from both countries. Now, the whole essence of uh, the webinar, which is like, you know, how did DASCI actually uh, uh, mapped itself to the educational entrepreneurship? So here, uh, through different activities throughout the project, um, we have tried to put them into this three dimension of social, digital and green. So um, the project exemplified the successful exchange of knowledge and best practices between Australia and India, fostering international cooperation and social learning. It has left a long lasting legacy through the development of new skill courses approved by India's national regulatory framework and the enduring relationship which built among all partners. By building collaborative network among educational institutions, NGOs, government bodies, and private sector, the project leveraged diverse expertise and resources. It identified the critical and emerging jobs requiring advanced agriculture practicing, addressing workforce needs in agriculture. The codification of occupational standards and co-development and delivery of training uh, highlighted the importance of collaboration and partnership, ensuring the workforce was prepared for the upcoming new role with the best pedagogical methods, which was uh, incorporated while building up the project. So that kind of touched the social dimensions. And then talking about the digital dimension, all of our five uh, vocational courses were designed to support the digital entrepreneurship, preparing the workforce for the digital economy. The core development of the courses required digital literacy. So among the training pack, uh, partners, the enhancing skills in new technologies, creating online quizzes, uh, core delivery, utilize the time, you know, uh, um, we made sure that we are beating the time difference between India and Australia. The project adopted a structured process, which we call as a waterfall a methodology in the project management. And each stage of the deliverables were clear and sequentially completed. The green dimensions of vocational uh, courses were co-developed with a strong emphasis on sustainability educating beneficiaries about the environmental impact of agriculture practices and the importance of biodiversity and the ecosystem as a whole. The courses served as a catalyst for embracing green skills, such as precision agriculture, which trained students, uh, learners for, for advanced technologies, like in the GPS or IOT and drone system. We designed the courses to support the green entrepreneurship. The, the courses developed the skills and knowledge around how you green the business with a sustainable practice uh, and preparing the beneficiaries for future. The carbon farming course, especially in particular, highlighted the role of inter entrepreneurship in, dri in driving the sustainable agriculture practices and green transformation, fostering an entrepreneurial mindset to encourage new ventures in carbon farming. So. All in all, like you know, all the activities which we undertook during the uh, process of building the project and executing, we definitely hit the social, digital, and green dimensions. Along with it, the DASCI also embraced the UN Sustainable Development Goals. Specifically, I'm going to talk about SDG 2, 4, 9, 10, 13, and 17. So with uh, SDG 2, uh, with the zero hung hunger, all courses had some element which prompted uh, and built skills around how to increase productivity and profitability in the farming community with uh, educational uh, with quality education we developed an international standard for vocational curriculum and course uh, sdg9 was innovative practices and technological integration in all courses through various activities Number 10 was mapped through catering all groups of learners, uh, overcoming the language barrier and the cultural impacts. And SDG 13 was to integrate the practical training on the green skills. And there are many more, but I'm just highlighting the few uh, from the uh, 
a demonstration in front of you. And number 17 was the capacity building across the nation's co-creation uh, co of courses, which uh, really delve into the unique partnership and remembering the cultural and uh, uh, differences and the language itself. So uh, Dasky project also created an educational value chain. There were a series of activities that added value to the educational experience from initial planning to a uh, final outcome. We focused on each stage added value and Dasky ensured that they provided maximum value to their beneficiaries and other stakeholders which came along as we deliberated with this project. In nutshell, the entire project had some critical features at every stage associated with challenges which catalyzed the way to develop an innovative model for vocational education. This waterfall method, a process-based approach, managed the deliverables very diligently. And with the paucity of time, I won't be able to go through the each and every one, but as you can see, the steps from planning to scoping study, standard development, RTO engagement, course development, teacher training, and a pilot delivery, and then final evaluation to produce the report, which would be cascaded along. So then um, Dasky also created its unique vocational quality framework that all de deliverables were met the desired standards and added as it was the pioneering project in wet sector, uh, this framework underpinned the Edward Jennings uh, PDCA cycle. This ensured that all activities involved were systematic and collaborative with the hint of agility across all the deliberations. So as you can see, the Dusky uh, experience is, was self-regulatory, setting clear objectives of KPI. The processes were self-guided. International part partnership, we had self-evaluation process across every activity and across all the things. There was capability upliftment. There was a lot of training which was involved for both Indian and Australian partners to ensure that we are um, uh, making sure that all the partners are equipped with what they need to be uh, training under and what role they are playing across the deliberations. So in conclusion, Dasky embraced the educational entrepreneurship by leveraging global expertise to develop new educational programs, tools and methodologies that address specific needs within the agriculture se sector, which can be replicated in other sectors too. So some of the key elements uh, of educational entrepreneurship was empowerment for success, adaptability and resilience, critical thinking and innovation was embedded across the uh, courses alongside with the AI development, but we make sure that the critical thinking is embedded across which fosters the, the innovative mindset as well and leadership and collaboration were uh, shown across um, uh, all the stages, which ticked all three pillars of um, educational uh, strategy, a partnership for future between Australian and um, Indian education system. So I'm so excited to discuss the potential power of ongoing uh, collaboration, which can drive the development of innovative training programs that can meet both Australian and Indian uh, training sectors. The partnership opens an opportunity to delve into joint development of training programs for, uh, for trainers as well, to co-create a training program on a global basis. Additionally, the recognition of competencies and qualification from both countries ensured that these programs are robust and internationally recognized on, uh, with a global standard in education. We focused on scaling and development by integrating even the small root uh, agriculture network so that it goes, the education is cascaded down to the grassroots level. And finally, the approach ensured that the successful strategies can be replicated and fostered in educational entrepreneurship uh, globally. So that uh, literally finishes my uh, presentation with my beautiful Dasky uh, graffiti here. So um, thank you for joining me. And this project has truly left a legacy, which is created not only the new set of educational courses, but which has already been approved by um, uh, national regulatory framework in India, but also in fostering a long lasting relationship between all partners. So thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Singh. That is an excellent presentation. Very insightful, very interesting. And it clearly shows how you've integrated social, digital, and green strategies into the agriculture sector. 
What I also appreciate is the fact that you bring in the idea of it being very scientific and can be replicated across other value chains, as well as the concept of co-creation. Now, Dr. Singh's presentation was very interesting, but since we're short in time, we'll move to the next presentation so that we ask our questions at a plenary session. So may I kindly ask our next presenter to get ready. And our next presenter is from Iran, Mr. Abbas Karimi. He comes from the Instructor Training Center. And I see his PowerPoint is ready. He'll be presenting on how they're encouraging youth in entrepreneurship for social innovation through entrepreneurship summer camps. You're welcome, Mr. Karimi. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is it okay? Yes, excellent. Oh, okay, uh, say so I'm here to uh, talking about the encouraging youth on entrepreneurship for social innovation through entrepreneurship summer camp. It's a, an interesting uh, experience that we have uh, in entrepreneurship summer camp in Iran. So I'm from instructor training center to Iran technical and vocational training organization. The, as you know, in the January of 2023, there was a very high, say, 5.9 uh, magnitude uh, earthquake in a city in West uh, Azerbaijan in Iran. It was a Hoi, the name of the city. And there was uh, many, uh, say, people was, say, say, affected and injured and three killed as well many say businesses and say was uh, destroyed so uh, at the same time we uh, asked the say unesco for a project together for disaster risk reduction and management so this proposal was different programs three programs but the say the the big scale of the program of the i mean the share the big share was uh, entrepreneurship summer camp. It's a special camp for youth affected by the earthquake. So it was, uh, say, confirmed, and the UNESCO, as a financial and intellectual support, us to uh, say um, have a good and successful uh, experience. Now I'm talking about the entrepreneurship summer camp. Uh, this camp was say implemented for 200, uh, say, students and youth, 100 girls and 100 boys. They are in four groups in 12 to 15 years old and 16 to 19 years old. In five days, a full five days, a camp that, you know, in summer we have, a, a, say, the schools are, say, free and, uh, say, they are, say, uh, closed and uh, for this time we prepared for them an uh, entrepreneurship camp. This camp was say as a team teaching we provide uh, eight master trainers they had the training for this camp one four master trainers for 12 to 15 Mr. Musavi, Dadashpur, Qadiri, and Hosseini, and the other four people and master trainers for the, uh, say, 16 to 19 years old group, say, uh, Alavi, Abedini, Sadri, and Rashidi. And I was as a head coach at that, and we provide this, uh, say, um, summer camp for the 200 girls and, uh, say, um, boys, uh, for uh, people was, say, injured and was, uh, say, some affected by the earthquake uh, as a disaster, say, uh, management. This camp was a very uh, wonderful uh, learning and teaching methods. We use many playing and, say, I mean, training games, uh, simulation. They learn by competition. We have some champions, some competition for them during these five days. As well, we made many, many things to do, many assignments for them, all uh, say learning by practicing, by doing, by preparing a canvas, um, a business canvas. Learning by watching. They had 
uh, good visits. They had uh, many, many video clips for them. And as well, all the people and their teams in the camp, they, they present what they did, what their idea, what let's say the idea development generation. So it was the whole uh, pedagogical, say, cover. In the five days, we cover all the items in the field of life, self, and entrepreneurial skills. But the contents, but the contents includes more than 10 training icebreakers. Every day they had the mealy, the most important lesson that I learned yesterday. Every day, some person, some students present what happened and what they did in the last day and the yesterday. And they will talk about what they have for future. We had four visits for guest speaker entrepreneurs. I say as a guest speaker, they talk together and discussion I will explain. And we had some training energizers for PM, for PM workshops that the energy is low. We provide many energizers, training energizers for them. And they will all the time energetic and entrepreneurial test to test them what happened and what they change. Uh, as we check, they learn many things they use. They learn how to identify the social problems, create of innovation ideas, and the necessary skills to put the ideas into action. Some uh, develop social networks, necessity skills to encounter the problem in the post disaster as an earthquake problem they had. And they were, they were equipped with the future skills in this, say, uh, summer camp. Uh, I want to say my best, say, uh, and uh, regards towards the UNESCO as a main, say, I mean, partner and as a main, say, donor to uh, support us, say, uh, financially and intellectually. But we have many, many partners. We had the city governance, municipalities, Minister of Education, a full-time Minister of Education, the local offices, were, they help us. Iran TV to technical and vocational training organization, and ITC as an implementing agency. And the most important that was industries, local industries, and local enterprises, enterprises and the entrepreneurs help us that the students talk to them, see their, what happened in the enterprise, what, why they are successful, what was they lost, and what happened for the future. So in this summer camp, pedagogically, we provide some entrepreneurial pedagogical, say, I mean, uh, practices. As I explained, there was entrepreneurship training game to simulate the real world life. We had tower making for teamwork, ring toss for risk taking, relay race puzzle for, uh, say, um, for, uh, for problem solving and uh, commitment. So all the participation. So you know, the 200 students, youth, during the five full days were fully participated and they will say um, uh, committed to uh, say uh, participate in all uh, say practices it was uh, wonderful uh, at the first day many of them many of them when i say many of them more than 50 percent was say uh, they don't like to talk they don't like to show what they have they say uh, no uh, any possibilities any say abilities but at the uh, last two days it was a wonderful day to we receive many, many presentations, many, uh, say, uh, good, uh, say, and high level uh, business canvas model. As well, we had some idea creation and development, idea development for each groups. As I explained, they had innovative ideas and they put these ideas into business model canvas. Uh, and we talk about what happened inside the, their ideas. Uh, you know, this city in Iran uh, produce uh, more than 50% of the sunflower seeds. 
and they are the high level and the high, uh, say, uh, scale of uh, fruit as well. But um, we don't see many, many, many processing uh, to uh, have this business and uh, to, say, make the value added for this. So in this, uh, say, uh, summer camp, um, all the person and the team, by the team, they provide uh, the different, I uh, say, uh, they find what are their local resources and how they buy using these local resources. They can meet the whole city needs. For example, for sunflower seeds, we had two good idea and what happened in future. Fruit, fruit juice, breads. And uh, this city is a border with the Turkey and breads in Iran very cheap. For example, they buy by one, do, one, one euro, we can say uh, 10 to 15 uh, leaves we can um, buy. But because this city is at the same border, some make some smuggles by the, uh, say, flour and, uh, say, bread. So uh, they had a good idea of how to solve this problem by applications, by different monitoring. So they had a, a different idea, and this is the one, say, uh, production of these different groups. Uh, the thing that was important, the industry and enterprises cooperation and participation with these, say, uh, summer camp. They ask and they, say, get the permission to visit their, say, industry. The children and these, say, youngs, uh, they, that is the first time they see what happened in the industry how a, a, a company works. They had uh, many, many visits, at least four visits, and discussed with the entrepreneurs, local entrepreneurs. These entrepreneurs give them the encouragement for future. So it was very important. Say we, they visit some, say, manufacturing services, some fruit, uh, say, comp uh, one fruit companies. Uh, say and um, uh, bakeries, very important bakeries, in, and they talk to uh, with the uh, entrepreneurs. The thing that is important, as we know, a social innovation has six key components: social needs, innovation solution, social effect, cooperation and partnership, social values, and sustainability. In this youth and say summer entrepreneurship camp we cover all the components it was a good relation between these components they learn how to identify the social needs they had some say solution for them they had the opportunity to present their ideas and evaluate them good team working relation to with the professional entrepreneurs they learn they should be on time. They should have ethics, not to go to the smuggling. Say responsibility and consideration to the human rights. Both, say, male and female are the same. Say they have a good teams in the same, uh, they work together. And we had, for sustainability, we asked the Ministry of Education to send 12 teachers to be as an internship opportunity and they learn what happened in the, say, summer camp. And we, uh, we guarantee the future of this, uh, say, uh, project will be continued in uh, Hoi City. Uh, and you can see the, say, some photos. At the last sentence, and before to uh, see a three minutes video, I want to say that we believe in this, say, the, as the ITC, that they believe the first step to grow new generation of social innovators and to invest on future of society, we should think about the entrepreneurial mindset and attitude for the youth. This youth was from 12 to 19. So within, we not only focus on the say a school uh, say uh, learning. We should say there's some non-formal, say, training for them, like, uh, say, summer camp, ITC camp. So we provide entrepreneurial learning for the youth because we believe tomorrow's success starts today.
uh, thank you and uh, I will say appreciate all of you and ask uh, the say admin to uh, show the uh, say three minutes uh, video clip from the summer camp. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Mr. Abbas. Thank you very much. That has been very, very interesting. And I hope all of you noticed none of the students or the youth were sleeping in class or not paying attention or on their phones. So maybe we should all adopt such an interactive approach. And we also notice working with industry and other partners is very important in ensuring we train our youth to appreciate that all these other sectors can co-create together. Excellent work, Ms. Takarimi. We appreciate that. And since our time is short, we are going to the next speaker. Save your questions, post them on the Q&A. We look at them at the end of all the presentations. Our next speaker is Mr. Alejandro Mele. He's president of Cometa Italy. And he'll be giving us a talk on the Cometa model on training entrepreneurship skills to disadvantaged youth. You're welcome. Thank you, Jacqueline. Um, Hello to everyone, and thank you to UNESCO for the invitation. I'm going to present uh, a model that we are running in uh, Como, Lake Como in Italy. And uh, um, it's a story that we started with uh, uh, the, sorry, I'm going to share. Uh, yeah, here we are. Um, this is the, the, um, the story that started from a um, fostering activity. So, we uh, have a social enterprise that uh, run three main activities. Well, fostering children. We have 110 children in a network of families. 
uh, education for uh, we started with dropout students and special needs and guys with disabilities and then work experience for fragile people we will speak about the model uh, uh, that we run in education we started as i said for dropout students and fragile people so we understood that experience the work experience made the difference uh, uh, for their learning and their motivation. Uh, why we worked on this? Uh, because uh, we noticed that the experience in, in, in the internship that they had was uh, so successful that they recovered their motivation to go uh, to, to, to be involved in. And how we do uh, the, these, these, uh, we run this model with an holistic approach, trying to create a, an integrated curriculum uh, with all the uh, contents. And uh, uh, what we do, practically, we created laboratories in the school. So the learning activities uh, from a practical point of view are made in a real job context. Uh, we created, as I am going to show No, so we are saying uh, why, it works because they surprise that uh, they are able to do something. It's not true that uh, these dropout students are not able to do nothing. Uh, <clears throat> how we do um, this, we, this, this, this uh, achieve this goal? Uh, trying to connect teachers and students with reality. So all the contents are focused and oriented in uh, this idea to connect uh, learning and reality in a co concrete way. And we are running now also a, a, a program to develop with AI, uh, AI, sorry, in English. Uh, um, we, we are running this program to create um, learning contents on maths in a real context in the curriculum of the are running in job experience. And what we do, we created uh, the school enterprise model in the laboratories. We created the real enterprises. So the students, while they have laboratories, they manage a bar, a restaurant, a catering company, a carpentry, a fashion studio, textile design. Which is the philosophy, understanding. We have no time to go deeper inside, but I've just we just want to uh, give an overview of the idea. There is a change we discovered uh, with these dropout students that we were changing a um, paradigm in from a pedagogical point of view. How to learn, how to develop your brain, uh, not only from an idealistic point of view, an idea and another, another in a logic way, but in the relationship with reality. It's a very powerful principle, but we can talk about it if someone is more interested. I don't want to bore you, we have not enough time, but we uh, thought to give you some uh, powerful uh, arguments uh, in order to understand how the model is working. It's a reality-based learning methodology. Uh, and we created this, uh, um, this mix, uh, uh, mixed curriculum between academic and uh, professional contents and, of course, life skills. The interesting thing is that STEM Academy uh, are uh, working on the principle of the knowledge in connection with the reality, just for scientific contents. Someone is working on arts, but we understood that we could start with the holistic approach also with the humanistic contents. So it's very interesting to think how uh, the unity of knowledge can be developed through the work experience. Um, you see something that I just said before, um, and I don't want to, okay, I can just uh, share another, in our opinion, very uh, interesting topic is the strength of the educative value because um, of this method. Um, the student protagonism uh, is a real task. We say they can experience the success of their job. Normally, they are, the school says you are not able to do maths, uh, it, uh, language, and everything, and they can succeed, and they can restart in a protagonism. Uh, 
uh, they have a personal responsibility. They have a strong relationship with uh, uh, the clients and they have a, a third part, the customer judgment for the evaluation. It's not just the teacher or a colleague, but it's a real client that spend money to drink a coffee in the bar. And if the coffee is not working well, the client can be can ask for another one. Uh, the critical consciousness is a really powerful experience for them. And of course, the skills develop the development. Because this is very important in our opinion. If you connect, for example, a, as a, an abstract content of maths with the real experience, how to build a uh, manufacture in carpentry, for example, it's more simple to understand how is it useful for the real life, but also is an help to, uh, to, to, to switch from the memory of uh, uh, short, from the short memory to the long memory. <clears throat> and of course, the success, we say it works on motivation and we have a lot of educational benefits. Uh, of course, they learn the economic dimension of their job and their activity. And of course, at the end, they have social recognition uh, because of many of the, for example, many of the company that take care of them in internship uh, are very satisfied of their uh, very advanced skills. So <clears throat> in our opinion, we can uh, teach entrepreneurship doing it in a real way. Uh, if we speak about knowledge, okay, we can take care of the content. If we speak about ability, we can take care of how to do something in a laboratory. But if we want to develop competence, we need a real context. This was the strong idea that we have. How it works, the integration of the curriculum, just last idea that I want to share. Of course, we can go deeper inside with more time. Uh, the curriculum is uh, uh, divided in period. The first period is the idea uh, or the design. We, they start from the relationship to the reality as in a real work. When you work for a brand, we are famous in Italy, of course, for fashion, for example. But we work in the same way also in uh, uh, restaurant and uh, and and uh, textile. Um we have this three main topic in our vet school. Um, so we start from an idea. There is a mood board that they have to create. They learn how to, with creativity, how to give the mood of some brand for a client, for a real client. And then they have to start from the mood board to create a project, a prototype. They have to implement the prototype. And at the end, there is a final evaluation also from the client. And um, there are two dimensions, communication and administration, that can help to develop the curriculum uh, from a quantitative point of view, administration, and qualitative point of view, communication. Because, of course, the students have to present the prototype to the client and the final product. They have to interact and they have to manage the quantitative dimension. So the costs and so on, all the uh, administration part. So this is an idea of holistic approach of a cur integrated curriculum. It's very challenging, but it could be um, modulated in uh, um, different ways. Not everything uh, at the beginning, but starting from, from with some examples. So um, before to leave you, we won't say that uh, we um, developed a, a, an academy. It's called the Give Academy. We will launch the 1st of October in Milan, and you can participate online or uh, in presence in Milan. And you are very welcome, of course, to launch the Give Academy. It's a consortium, an European consortium, where uh, Cometa, our uh, uh, vet school, uh, is proposing a training course on this model and more educational point of view because we are very focused on education. And uh, at the end, uh, probably have a few minutes more. Yes, uh, um, I want just to uh, give some practical example. Um, we had 
uh, a partnership with Bershka, is a brand of Zara and the others brand of Inditex Group. Uh, they gave us a, um, a, 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 a in, in Italian we say commessa is a commitment <coughs> to, to realize a, a t-shirt. Uh, the classroom uh, was divided in groups of two uh, guys they created a mood board then a prototype then uh, the project and prototype and uh, the company decided the winner of this uh, uh, competition and the first uh, t-shirt was produced and sold around the world can you imagine the satisfaction and the change in the life of these guys that I'm re they, they became really proud to see their work around the world. Or another example with uh, carpentry, uh, 14 years old, uh, first year of carpentry, uh, the uh, exchange, uh, stock exchange in Milan asked to create, um, a, a, how do you say paravento? Sorry. I, I cannot remember. Uh, I, you say uh, it's a sort of uh, mm, piece of wood that uh, uh, creates a separation. It's in, in, Fran in French, is separé, uh, a separation to uh, create a different space in a big room. Uh, so they had this uh, order from the client. They realized that every guy's 14 or 15 years old realized their own prototype and they were produced, voted by the employees of the stock exchange um, uh, in Milan. And they, we produced for them uh, this manufactured um, for, for their, their venue. So, uh, of course, the students studied the brand, the story of the building, the, the meaning of stock exchange. So it's a uh, holistic approach with knowledge for all the contents that uh, that that they managed, so and of course it was a very successful, very successful uh, experience. I can tell many stories about uh, the, the the but the meaning uh, of uh, the method. I think is quite clear. And if you have more uh, question, or um, please ask me now or write and come to visit because it's uh, we educate through beauty and also it's a very beautiful venue that we manage because we believe that the health of each person is made for the beauty and the beauty of the environment and the care that we use with the, the children is part of the power of education that we manage so thank you very much for this time and i hope to uh, have, have been uh, have, have done uh, a useful uh, uh, contribution for the discussion. Thank you very much for that insightful discussion. Thank you for inviting us to your Cometa model and seeing how well things work and how well you interact with different players in industry and experiential learning as well. Fascinating to see that students can create t-shirts that go around the world. I'm sure they're very proud where they are. And I hope we also buy some of these products to prove that entrepreneurship indeed can have both positive social impact and financial impact. So thank you very much. There are a few comments for you on the chat. You can also check that. But we will reserve the questions for the question session so that we can allow our next speaker to present their talk on um, development of business skills in vocational education institu institutions in Uzbekistan. So kindly, Dr. Ruzmatov, I hope I pronounce your name right. You could upload your PowerPoint and put it on SlideShare. And then you can start your presentation. Thank you. I have started my presentation. I think, um, uh, I hope it's uh, to see for everyone. And um, uh, thank you for for anybody in this webinar. And uh, hello to everyone from Uzbekistan. 
we are a vocational education institution in Uzbekistan for youngers and for adult uh, people. And uh, this uh, subject of our is um, development of entrepreneurship uh, in vocational education institution of Uzbekistan. And um, we have to promote the employment of unemployment peasants and uh, members uh, to of poor families of uh, by training them vocational foreign languages and entrepreneurial cheap skills in practical working centers and state and non-state educational institutions. And we have um, uh, implemented uh, such a kind of functions uh, as the following. And uh, the first one is um, we have trained uh, of 200 200,000 unemployed people, including more than 100,000 unemployed women and and um, 100,000 unemployed youngers in vocational foreign languages and entrepreneurship skills. And second one is trained of teachers of 100 vocational training centers based on international standards, on DVV standards. It is a, a German um, collaboration center uh, the, which, which works at our, uh, at our institution right now. And the next one is taking measures to increase the share of private sectors and master apprentice schools to up 20% in vacation, vocational training. And um, all sources financing is state and all state funds intended to cover the costs of vocational education are covered by state budget. Uh, that means uh, Uzbekistan covered all the, all the costs and all the all the needs, uh, materials, all the needs, projects, all the needs, uh, collaboration with, with the whole world. And um, we have, uh, as an institution, developed short-term courses um, for the developing small businesses and entrepreneurship across the country, across the youngers. And um, the following aspects are important and the first importance of adult education, basics of, of employment, formal and informal study. And the next hard skills, soft skills and their importance in business training. And basics and uniqueness of entrepreneurial activity, methods of choosing of business ID, legal forms of business registration, and uh, next one is market research and marketing methods and teaching what a business plan is and its components. And next one is uh, as as in our presentation is stakeholders. Um, as as you know, and um, um, every every activity needs uh, stakeholders and supporters. We have uh, such kind of supporters of Uzbekistan. That, that named uh, uh, Chamber of Commerce and Industry of Uzbekistan and Ministry of Science of Higher Education of Republic and Ministry of Culture and Tourism and the Textile Industry of the Republic. And the next uh, sector is the private business sectors of all types. And we have developed the uh, auto industry and they, they are involved to our uh, programs too. And the, the last one is Ministry of Digital Technologies. <clears throat> and the development of self-employment skills in vocational education uh, institution in Uzbekistan has become a key fox. Uh, uh, as a key fox country, upgrade to economy and prepare its workforce in and the demands. And <clears throat> Um, Uzbekistan, of course, um, has activated uh, some of decisions of president um, in Uzbekistan. It is so all handless and activity activities depends uh, on the on the decision on the decree of the president and the importance and the necessary uh, necessary. 
programs of president is um, the the crucial the crucial point was the every family is an an entrepreneur the program of the president of the republic and the next one is decree uh, supporting any type of entrepreneurial activity and the third one is uh, very important and supporting women and girls uh, in business activities. And the next measures of cabinet of ministers ensuring employment of the population. And the next is decision is protection of rights and interests of entrepreneurial subjects in regions. That means in the in the all regions of Uzbekistan. And the last one is uh, very, very important was it is involving poor and, and unemployed citizens in entrepreneurship uh, with the activity of bank solutions. That means um, all the poor people uh, were supported uh, with the money by the, by the banks inside of Uzbekistan. Um, that's uh, my inf information about our uh, entrepreneurship in Uzbekistan. As I know from this um, webinar, we are a very, very baby in this field of entrepreneurship. And we are growing our goals, our aims in the field uh, with the youngers, with the students, uh, with the, all the people. We have just a uh, women's twice more than uh, men in Uzbekistan. And we foc we are focusing on the on the qualification of only uh, of many of many women and uh, girls in Uzbekistan because we have we do have uh, many many unemployed uh, ladies unemployed women unemployed uh, citizens in, in in Uzbekistan we are we are we are going to to qualify. As, a, as an institution, this um, um, uh, iron, iron uh, persons, iron people in our country. And thank you very much for your attention. Sorry, thank you very much for that presentation. Uh, you had more time, but I see you are very clear, very concise and brief to the point. And that is excellent. We uh -huh. particularly like the presentation because you bring out aspects that every family is an entrepreneur. Finally, you've answered the lifelong question, are entrepreneurs made or born? Mm -hmm. Now you're confirming uh -huh. to us, I have potential of being an entrepreneur. I don't have to be born with all the skill sets. And that is excellent. Uh -huh. Now, having come to your presentation, we thank you for that. We would okay. like to get to the question and answer session. And at this okay. point, perhaps we will start by putting up an open question to all members. I will ask in order of presenters so that you can share your insights. One mm -hmm. person in the Q&A area is asking, all these are fantastic ideas. But the question is, what is the impact in your different contexts? So maybe Dr. Singh, you can start by telling us, what impact have you created with the excellent work you're doing in your context? Sure. Thanks, Jacqueline. Can I uh, take the privilege to introduce my colleague here, Dr. Sai Krishna Nanduri from India NSFI. And um, he's uh, with me to answer all the questions as well. So at the impact, because the beneficiaries were India, may I just ask Sai to uh, tell us what the impactful things which is happening after the projects just concluded in June? Over to you, Sai. Yeah. Thank you very much, Shweta. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, very specific uh, to the impact. Uh, that's a very uh, good question. We were pondering and discussing and discussing for a long time on uh, what is the impact that we have created through the project. Uh, uh, we think we have uh, uh, created impact at uh, uh, typically three levels. One, at the uh, policy level, because this program is fundamentally about collaboration between India and Australia. And, uh, and we have established a very clear-cut process of uh, comparing and contrasting the uh, vocational education system standards between two countries and sort of uh, how we can align with one another and uh, collaborate and contribute. That is uh, one impact. 
uh, which has happened and already we are seeing uh, cases where uh, partners from both uh, uh, India and Australia have come together joint hands and articulating projects in the uh, specific spheres of work that we have taken up under the project, that is one. Uh, second level uh, is uh, uh, at a time where uh, the courses that we have picked up under the project are completely niche or maybe what we call as uh, 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 frontier areas, emerging areas where India as a country uh, hasn't yet developed a, uh, uh, a wisdom or a knowledge base around it. Australia uh, being a front runner in some of the areas, we uh, joined hands and articulated the courses for the future uh, in the Indian context, which is uh, in a very big way is contributing to the uh, uh, emerging skills in the country that is at uh, level two. And third, uh, uh, as we have articulated and uh, uh, sort of standardized the courses and uh, uh, sort of uh, piloted them, these courses are readily uh, grabbed and adopted by uh, public systems uh, in the country uh, because uh, uh, somehow uh, there was a felt need uh, uh, right there in the market system where uh, these courses are uh, essentially to be adopted but somehow it was not happening and as a output the output of uh, this project which is five courses are at least in the case of digital agriculture in case of uh, organic farm and business facilitator courses. Both of courses are readily accepted, accepted by the, and also carbon farming uh, course. These courses are uh, being readily uh, absorbed by the public systems and programs are articulated in terms of the annual plans in the coming uh, one or two years to uh, take it to scale across the country. So these are the three specific impacts uh, that we are able to uh, create uh, through the project. Thank you. Thank you very Thank you. much for that insight. So we have policy, we have knowledge base, and we also have courses that can be adopted by different sectors. That's excellent. Can we ask the next picture, speaker rather, Mr. Abbas, to tell us what impact has your project created? Uh, thank you. Great question. Uh, as I explained in the first for ITC, we previously we had a a network of 300 entrepreneurship trainers. As you know, ITC is responsible for train of, training of TV trainers in Iran. And we had 300, a network of 300 uh, entrepreneurship training in all over the Iran, 31 provinces. But now we have a specialized network for entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship training for youth. Yeah, for a summer, for a camp, is 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 for us, and the thing uh, for the for the whole city and the, for the people. First, if we th uh, think individually, there was a very very big changes from the before to a start and after the camp. As I explained, many people they are ashamed to talk in the public, to present. And they don't know what happened in the industry, in enterprises. But that, the second, uh, uh, say, uh, uh, end of the day, uh, say, the, the camp, all they want, uh, they ask to present. They, uh, they have an idea. They have the new development for their idea and generation. So they know what their needs and what for, the, say, their city. I want to say the the very very say um, example as a new. For example, yesterday we had a contact from Hoi from the uh, students. It was a girl. She asked us the idea, one of their idea that was generated and developed and was uh, as say as a business comment. They have the investors. They need help, more help. It it means. After the one month that is, say, more than one month, even two months uh, later, they're thinking, you no know, entrepreneurial, their mindset, their attitude is changed. Yes, it's changed. And the last sentence, as you know, in the safe future, the, the owners, the enterprise owners, the entrepreneurs, all the companies, and as well, the successful entrepreneurs, they need the soft skills. In this summer camp, we focus on soft skills, training, and learning. 
not by uh, say academic and or a school a school type it was a very very new methodologies and pedagogical way of i uh, say soft skills training and attitude it was the, uh, used by 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 game by engaging by have a network thank you Thank you very much for that insight. Indeed, there's more partnership and linkages with industry and other players. Investors are coming in to collaborate. There's a change of mindset to entrepreneurship and soft skills taught in a very engaging and fun way is one of the new things and the impact they've created. Excellent. Now I'll go to the third speaker. Kindly tell us how you have impacted Italy with your model of Cometa. But we, this is an interesting question. It's a very uh, <clears throat> uh, strange story because we started with a very beautiful place. And at the beginning, we were looked at as vet school, not second chance, third or fourth chance for the students. But we started with a very beautiful place, school, and all the school of the area started painting and refreshing the building. The second interesting thing is that the model was that we created the school enterprise model um, was a point of inspiration for many other schools and we gave a, a lot of consultancy uh, to start with similar experience in italy and abroad um, but the main uh, interesting thing is that the students were really involved in uh, this uh, kind of activity and we managed starting we we 19 years ago, in 2005, we started with the special program only for dropout students based on this model. And uh, we uh, have not less than 50 guys every year to re restart in uh, uh, with motivation and uh, in the life and study uh, program and in work experience. And some of them arrived to university because they founded themselves and uh, enthusiastic motivation. And so it was really successful for the students, not only these 50 drop of students, but also for the other 350 students of the school that apply uh, this kind of model and practice. So it works very well for the students. This, the company the company are very satisfied because the students have, uh, more, uh, are more proactive, are more um, present and have more uh, high skill uh, in respect of the other schools. And uh, uh, the teachers are involved very much. At the beginning was... Uh, a little challenging because we changed the idea of uh, uh, of the way of teaching. So they were un, out of the uh, uh, comfort area. Uh, so it was not simple to start, but uh, during, we uh, founded a lot of uh, solutions to, uh, from an organizational point of view and a lot of help to to train them and uh, now it's working it's very interesting the uh, involvement of the teachers uh, but last but not least the institutions accepted our proposal of model they changed the law we wrote a proposal uh, uh, for a law for a regional law and national law and we became uh, uh, Europe, in, at the beginning uh, european uh, good practice in entrepreneurship with atf foundation uh, the agency of the european commission and then we uh, arrived in unesco as a good practice and we are uh, developing a great relationship uh, due to the uh, uh, network of uh, unesco and we are and last but not least uh, we are starting we we trained a group of teachers from georgia uh, in Asia, and uh, we are going to sign this week a memorandum of understanding to improve policy and training for students and teachers um, with this kind of proposal. So I believe that the impact is um, has a high potential, and we have to cultivate being patient and working hard. Thank you very much. That is very comprehensive. We indeed have new school models. Students are more involved and interactive. There's inclusion and development of motivation in students who even pursue university education. The teachers are more involved, although you kind of challenge them a little, but they're now very involved. And you're practicing and spreading this out to other regions, which is excellent. So thank you. So our final speaker, please share with us what impact 
your program has brought in your region? Yes, um, from Uzbekistan, uh, after um, um, activating uh, the decisions of President of Republic of Uzbekistan, just we have um, uh, developed uh, impacts um, are was see by human capital development, entrepreneurial activities promote um, uh, promote skills development in areas such as management, technology, and marketing, enhancing the overall marketing and uh, workforce cap capabilities in Uzbekistan. And the second stage was successfully integration. Mm, the young the young peoples into local and global markets uh, in the in the labor markets entrepreneurs often engage uh, with international trade helping them um, uh, in Uzbekistan integrate into the global economy and in the, in the local economy and which opens up new markets for exports and imports from the from the investments from uh, from the all the world and the government of Uzbekistan has been encouraged uh, entrepreneurship through, through uh, the projects, uh, for example, dual educational system in Uzbekistan. And dual, uh, through dual, uh, the implementing such kind of models uh, for dual vocational training, for example, in Margilan and in other regions in Uzbekistan, with partnership with Germany and with uh, Russian countries, uh, has been developed uh, in, in short time in Uzbekistan. Uh, uh, in, in, in the last uh, two years, uh, we have developed this impacts, this uh, innovation, this industry innovation by the youngest, by the adult uh, unemployed persons. Thank you very much. Thank you. Again, we can see there is the catalyst for entrepreneurship in Uzbekistan. We see the dual education model is being enhanced. There is the idea of integration of young people in economic activities, and this grows the market both locally and globally. And there's also increase on all these entrepreneurial activities, which is good economically for the country. So excellent points, great impact. Now, Johannes, if I may, I have one question for all the presenters, then I'll let you come in. So my question to all the presenters, and maybe this time round we'll start on a different order. We'll start with our last presenter and move upwards. What is the one advice you would give any of the members listening to this webinar on how best to ensure that the entrepreneurial activities they start have social impact and they include new emerging issues like digital skills to ensure that entrepreneurship is a success and has impact in society. What one advice would you give the members? So if we could start with you, um, Dr. Ruzmatov, please, what would you advise us? Um, my advice could be um, uh, retraining of enter entrepreneurs and uh, uh, of uh, mentors, of teachers, uh, in the in the in the in the global in the in the global countries uh, where it has been developed the entrepreneurship uh, successfully like uh, like Germany India and Russia and Italy and uh, just um, we have a lack uh, of uh, of mentors and teachers um, uh, for um, for the for the younger in Uzbekistan uh, it demands uh, for teachers here uh, in in local government in local institution. Uh, we just need a huge, huge amount of teachers uh, of uh, and um, professional teachers. I mean, and uh, it 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 could be better. It could be uh, successful if 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 the entrepreneur uh, entrepreneurs from the all the world. Uh, and they, they, we, if we could um, invite them to Uzbekistan and uh, we uh, exchange our our meanings, exchange our experience, uh, uh, would be would be great, uh, successful way uh, to to collaborate uh, uh, in the field of entrepreneurship. Thank you very much. So retraining of the trainers and of course yes. exchange programs. Uh, please, can we have any input from Mr. Alejandro? 
I have my opinion, uh, if we want to work on entrepreneurship, the first goal is to build the personality of the guys. The second one is to give the instruments, the skills, digital or not digital, because in Italy, we can say, we have a great example, no? It's a country full, full, full of entrepreneurs, uh, individual or little company. Or we are famous in the world for in entrepreneurship. And uh, I mean, uh, I believe that uh, it's, uh, I'm, I'm sure that it's a cultural factor. So we have to work on the mindset, the personality, the um, interested in to take risk, to build something significant, the satisfaction to do some uh, uh, concrete, to create value for people. Uh, so I believe that we have to work on this. And from a social point of view, uh, I, the protagonism that this experience can give to, uh, for example, dropout students or people with disabilities, it's unbelievable. We started after we have uh, we increased the um, rate of of uh, placement uh, more than ninety percent with this program, and uh, we uh, in, we created for uh, the former student with disabilities the company the social enterprise to uh, hire them and they are working um, they are wonderful no we, the first experience was a bar with the uh, guys with down syndrome and uh, someone was scared no said someone of our donors said uh, pay attention probably the clients can be uh, in uh, trouble with this kind of people no, 10 years ago in Italy started, there was few experience now as are growing very quickly, but uh, it was a uh, key key application. No, I, I do say a, a killer application. No, no application, but a, 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 a key, key factor, key factor, sorry. It was a key factor to have guys with Down syndrome as waiters in our bar because they are so kind, so nice that people say thought to come back to stay with them and to be to feel comfort because they are they are always smiling and they help us to understand the real uh, meaning of the life uh, so uh, for a social inclusion uh, from a, a social inclusion point of view i believe that entrepreneurship needs to work before on life skills and then on digital and art skills this is our experience that we can talk about it. Excellent points, excellent points. So we are taking out of your excellent points, mindset and inclusion, and sure we leave no one behind. I'd like to ask our next speaker, Mr. Karimi, anything you'd like to give us as a takeaway? Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, great uh, recommendation. And I want to add that uh, Also, all we lost Abbas. Yeah, I'm sorry, we lost you for a bit. Would you please repeat? His I think he's frozen. frozen. Yeah. Okay, yeah. as we wait for him to get back online, uh, Dr. Singh, kindly share with us yeah, sure. once your key yes. takeaway. Maybe. Absolutely. Oh, he's back. <laughs> oh, he's back. Okay. Yeah. Hurry on, yeah. Mr. Karimi. What a, what a, uh, for a second, I was back together. <laughs> okay, sorry. So the second is okay. Yes, perfect. Yeah. The second is uh, in Iran. Is uh, the, the the parents investing uh, say most on their uh, say uh, say children? Um, I think the same in other countries. So they they invest only uh, for uh, say education. So I mean education. Only the academic and theoretical academic, uh, say education, but I I recommend that they invest on education, but on vocational and skill, especially soft skills. If we invest on soft skills, we can make the future of our, our children and our country and world. And the last is the networking. Uh, I hope that uh, all the say participants here and uh, special um, professors all, we have a good, uh, say, uh, network by Univoc, and we can develop and expand it 
uh, for example, for uh, a special, a specialized, say, field for train of trainers, for the soft skills, for entrepreneurship camp and different. And this is good. Uh, say networking is very important and we should develop our specialized, uh, say, networking. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. So we're picking their soft skills and networking, very important aspects. Lastly, Dr. Singh. Yes, thank you very much. Great advices, and it's a great segue from uh, what Abbas just mentioned. We should leverage off this particular platform. Be uh, it's a global village, and coming from Australia, where we is a very multi and we are very diverse. And um, one thing which I would like to say is to include the cultural uh, inclusivity in all the programs. So look from the lens of you know that cultural part and see how we can integrate that so it's inclusive. You know and in, in that way, we can bring everyone together in the uh, educational journey. Doesn't matter which sector we are um, uh, developing it for, but you know, addressing those kind of thing will really make social inclusion and uh, you know uh, hit one of the dimensions of educational entrepreneurship. But I like Sai to um, add on to what I have just said and see if there's anything else we'd like to put in as an advice. Thank you. Sure. Uh, thank you, Shweta. Uh... Uh, based on our experience in the project and also all of our partners uh, experience more than eight years in uh, taking up entrepreneurship development, uh, I broadly uh, concur with uh, Mr. Alessandro's uh, uh, inputs. Absolutely, uh, he's speaking uh, in tandem with what was uh, in our thought. But uh, if, he, if you want us, uh, uh, Ms. Kisato, to uh, articulate one reason, uh, one element which will have a catalytic role in the success of any entrepreneurship development program, enterprise promotion program, is the identification of needs of uh, not only the markets, but also needs of the people in terms of their aspirations, their ambitions, and also the essentiality of that particular product or service in the market. We ascribe the success of our DCSK project to the need of the country, uh, especially in the current times, and that has played a significant role uh, in uh, making it uh, successful. And lastly, uh, 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 it, as a component of it, once we identify it, I think uh, ease of business is not only applicable to corporates, but also it is applicable to enterprise enterprises in, the, uh, in all uh, segments. So uh, a proper supportive ecosystem is critical to uh, make things work in the enterprise space. I think uh, somebody has to take up that particular role. Thank you. Excellent feedback. So we have, in this case, we need to have cultural integration and inclusivity, having a supportive ecosystem and identifying both the needs of the market and the needs of the people. I think, ladies and gentlemen, you'll all agree with me. Indeed, social entrepreneurship is empowering change and entrepreneurship needs to be innovative. So I thank you all for your very interesting and informative presentations. And I'd like now to ask Johannes to take over and handle the summary session. Thank you. Um, thanks a lot. Uh, thanks a lot for the very, very cool presentations today and a very nice discussion. Thanks a lot for that. I have the privilege to give a summary what was done in these four webinars, what we had up to now. And I have a small presentation for some points. And then I'd like to give you an overview. But in the beginning, I would appreciate um, because this conference, this webinar series is about innovative paths for entrepreneurship. It's about the future of entrepreneurship, which we like to create together. And I like a lot what our English colleague said, we are a platform of a global village. And I agree with that. And cultural integration is super important because we are we are in many cases common, but we have special, special things and special culture uh, interpretations. And of course, we have special target groups for the different entrepreneurship education approaches. Therefore, I would highly appreciate if you like to write down recommendations, points, write down them in the chat, write down them to our emails from Priscilla or my one or to Lenny one that we can add this. Uh, to, to go on together for the next steps because we like to take some more steps together and, um, and I think it's super when we as a village uh, see these opportunities and these possibilities. 
I will be now, now was particular about the questions how we can integrate social innovations, social entrepreneurship, green uh, entrepreneurship, and digital entrepreneurship to take a look for the future of entrepreneurship uh, in our communities, in our different countries. And I think it's important to see uh, that these three spheres, these three elements uh, have a lot of common aspects, but have also special interpretations. And we saw in all the cases, what we had in these four webinars, that there is two major important routes. We have a couple of colleagues who are particular foster the entrepreneurial mindset. They are particular oriented with the person development. Uh, and we have a couple of us who are really focused of creation of employment during the TV training, uh, during the outside programs, what they are offering. And this is important to see. Entrepreneurship education uh, in this webinar was clear. There are two major important values. It's the one uh, to create a mindset and the other one to create really employment and to create employment by perspective, but really during the training. And um, in the first session, what we had, uh, Lene was so nice to give a nice overview about the ELEC and particular about the self-assessment tool, what is inside the ELEC. And I, many of your presenters were so nice to fill out uh, the ELEC and to give an overview, which I will now not do because we have a bit short of time, but it's in my presentation. So you see the variations of values which are important, uh, the different target groups, the different methods, uh, the different uh, drivers who are used uh, as a nice way uh, to uh, share experiences. Uh, in the second sessions, we were particularly focused to digital entrepreneurship and we saw three orientations. The first one, Xi Zhong from China uh, did show us the importance of digital platforms to, sh to create a network. And they have a network in China with 600,000 trainers from Tibet institutions where they are sharing um, their experiences in this platform. And I see, okay, a platform, a digital platform is a very useful tool for sharing experiences. Uh, Thomas from Singapore has shown us digital entrepreneurship by integration in the training. And he was using artificial intelligence for a most important aspect. It was uh, strengthening the storytelling by artificial intelligence because they saw storytelling is a, as a lack of the students. Therefore, they are doing this. Thomas has also shown us how is it possible that an institution with 14,000 students, 14,000 learners can integrate entrepreneurship in a very wide way. And he has shown us how they are offering each a semester for 2,000 students, 200 uh, 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 courses, uh, and how they are uh, training the, the trainers for that. Uh, because a couple of colleagues uh, mentioned it's a crucial point very often to find the right trainers for the courses. It's not so easy to make this combination that it's getting practical, uh, that, that the trainer has experience, and that the trainer is state of the art, uh, that he's not telling something historical. Um, Stelly has shown us how they are using um, a co-designing process to create a digital uh, learning tool for a taboo thematic in Africa. And I, did, I like this a lot because I think it's super crucial that we create entrepreneurship really for our target group, that, that we fit to the needs. And this was the major outcome in this session that uh, we want to support uh, the person development of the and the needs of the learners and through digital entrepreneurship. In the third event, in the third session, uh, what's a particular about sustainable entrepreneurship. And there we had two aspects in this session. Uh, our colleague Yetun from uh, Nigeria has shown us how you create jobs in a combination of um, green aspects in combination with fashion industry. And he, she has shown us how they are doing this by using resources, which we normally do not see that they are good resources, but they use resources uh, in combination with fashion and design to create employment. Uh, and, and I did like this a lot 
And she made a clear message. Sustainability is an attitude. It is something what we have to see that's a part of our thinking when we try to think in an entrepreneurial way. We have to do this automatically all the time. That How can I do this in a sustainable way and not just in a profitable way? It's a good combination. Uh, our colleague from Spain, uh, from uh, Technica, has shown us how they are training the trainers. Uh, they involve trainers in innovation processes uh, in companies. And I think this is a really very good way how you can qualify trainers who stay all the time in the TBED organization, that from time to time, that they are participating in innovation processes inside companies. And uh, they have a, a network of 600 trainers who are doing this on a regular basis. And I think that's a really very important aspect. Our Joseph von Philippine, um, he has shown us there is a change. In the past, um, they were trained for the they were doing offering training for the training uh, tra uh, for the labor market. Today, they are creating self-employment uh, because they have to show this perspective, and this is a really tremendous change. And he has shown this how they are doing this with green sensitivity. Uh, they have a couple of uh, exercises integrated how they show students how they can do this by sensitivity uh, for uh, environment and creation of jobs. And I like this approach a, a lot of what he was showing us. And our colleague from uh, Myanmar, uh, Tida, was showing something comparable. Yes, they offer something, in my opinion, very special, which I only know from Paraguay. They offer earning possibilities during the training for the learners, uh, but in combination with green entrepreneurship. Today, we saw um, in the beginning, you made this very nice, uh, clear message. Social entrepreneurship is mission driven. Social entrepreneurship like to give and show how they, they have an impact for the society. And we saw this today. Uh, we saw it on the one hand from Alexandro from Italy. Uh, by the method what they are using, they are able uh, to catch up with um, target groups which um, have special needs. Uh, they are dropout students. They are students with disabilities. But with this method, with school enterprise and production school method, you can fit the needs of them. So we see methods have a super important, uh, it's super important to select the right methods for the right target group. And in that way, you have an impact. Uh, we also saw this from our colleague from Iran, by Abbas, when he showed us summer camps uh, and an offer for students. And he showed us that they have 50% girls and boys in, inside the summer camp, uh, where, where I like this a lot. But I see summer camps is a super important aspect that you can offer this for students with special needs. Uh, and he has shown us they are offering 31 summer camps. We have 300 trainers. I like this a lot. It's a, it sounds that they have a good impact for the society. Our colleague from Uzbekistan has shown us a large, a really large aspect of entrepreneurship training for unemployed people. Uh, that's that's an, uh, for small businesses. We see this approach from a couple of countries and see this is quite a challenge to offer for unemployed people entrepreneurship approaches by small businesses. It's because it's normally there's an intensive discussion in the literacy and all based on also research that this is a group which normally is not so easy to bring them in self-employment. Therefore, I think that's uh, if you are successful, this has really a large impact, and that's an important example to share it. Um, in the beginning, our colleagues from India did show us how do you bring entrepreneurship in combination with agriculture skills. Uh, and, I, and I think it seems super important to show how you can start with a value creation process uh, in an area where you have a beautiful resource, but very often the people do not have a high income or a, not a good income. So value creation is super important for agriculture area. Um, me, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to say thank you that you participated in this webinar, and I'd like to take over to Priscilla.
Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, ladies and gentlemen. It has been such a pleasure to have everyone here uh, for the last four weeks. And I believe we have gained some very insightful uh, opportunities to improve and strengthen the initiatives that we have in our centers. So I, I don't want to repeat what uh, Johannes has just said, but I really want to give a big thank you for every one of you for coming back every week uh, to learn something new and to contribute. I believe the chats have been very insightful. A lot of people just giving in their comments and sharing experiences in the chats and we really appreciate that uh, and a lot more uh, of you who gave us a lot of interaction on the Q&A session. So thank you, thank you so much. I'd like to take this special thank, uh, thanks to our moderators. Uh, we've had a group of four interesting moderators who has, have come in, and that has been uh, Johannes Lidner. You've been consistent on this. Thank you so much for your participation and also giving us the insights uh, as we had gone on. Uh, today we have uh, uh, Dr. Jack Jacqueline Kisato, who has also been very excellent and fantastic in really giving us a summary of social innovation. And, and before this webinar, we had our own Kenneth Berriantos, who also really gave a summary of the greening uh, topic. So that is very insightful. And this is why we wanted to bring in more of people who are working within our networks to come and moderate. And we also want to in involve much more of you on that. So to our presenters, I would like to give special thanks to Desi. Desi, who gave us the opening uh, remarks. Uh, Lenny Martini, our own, uh, from, uh, from the IYT team here at UNESCO Univoc. Also, Lidna, again, for your presentation that you made in the first webinar. Uh, for the digitalization group, we want to give special thanks to the Shenzhen from Shenzhen University, Thomas Lee from uh, Tamasek University, and Miss Sally from uh, Lulu Lab. Thank you so much for the innovative uh, approaches that you presented from the green innovation as well that uh, Johannes has already mentioned. We want to thank uh, uh, Yetunde, uh, Yetunde from uh, Nigeria for the interactive session there. Inigo from Technica. We want to thank Noah Noah from Cameroon. We want to also thank uh, Yosef and Daisy from Tesda, as well as we want to thank uh, Ms. Sue from Maymal. And lastly, but not least, for today's interaction, we've had a great uh, set of presenters, starting with uh, Dr. Sin. Thank you so much. Abbas Karimi, thank you. Alessandro Mele, thank you. And I'll see you later today. And of course, uh, Uzbekistan, uh, Mr. Uh, Kakramon. Oh, fantastic. Thank you so much for these opportunities and really want to thank our team from UNESCO Univoc who made this possible without forgetting our core team. Uh, we had Max, uh, who has you have all met in the technical sessions. Uh, we had Audrich coming in, Felista with the social media interaction. We have Lenny, who has been fantastic in, in communicating and leading this. And of course, we have the other bigger UNESCO Univoc team that has made this possible, including our head of office. We want to thank you so much. So what is next for entrepreneurship? We are going to explore much more on about the future of work. We'll start this by uh, participating in the forthcoming uh, conference in Uzbekistan, and we're happy to see one of our presenters from Uzbekistan who's going to welcome us there, and, and we're going to really share some of the activities that TVET can do in promoting entrepreneurship. Stay tuned for activities that we have in line. We have a discussion paper coming on board as well uh, later in the year or early next year that we're just going to give you like direction and give you insights on where the future of work is going and how can we leverage the, the three spheres that we've been discussing here and even the integrated approach on it to really ensure that we stay ahead of the curve. So without further ado, I want to thank you, our participants, our dear participants. Thank you so much for this opportunity to really give us your ear and give us your experiences. And I cannot take anything else other than to say thank you so much. I think from our panelists who are here, we can just wave and take that last picture and say thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and have a great day.